welcome to an episode of Rich Biz Life's Adventures. Now since I've owned the van, when I've been driving it, I've noticed you're always fighting to keep the van in a bit of a straight line. Now it's due an MOT in the next few weeks, so I'll give it a bit of a once over, I jacked it up. And when you wiggled the driver's wheel, there was a bit of play in the track rod end. After a bit more of further examination, I found that it was on the inner track rod right end. You have an inner and you have an outer track rod right end. So I've been on eBay and I bought inner and outer track rod right ends for left and right. Now I'm only going to be changing the driver's side one. They're not handed so I can keep the other one as spare. Now the only reason why I bought a pair is because it was £21 for one side and £29 for both sides. So I figured I might as well buy both sides. Now when I say inner and outer track rod ends, this bit here screws onto your uh, steering rack, and that's your inner track rod end. That's got a nylon bushing in there, and after a period of time, that wears out, and you get a bit of play in this in this joint. Similarly, on your outer track rod end, there's a, a nylon bush in there, and over a period of time, that develops a bit of play in it. So it can be either or that you get play in. Your outer, your outer track rod end screws onto the end of your track rod arm and your inner track rod. You have a boot cover in this that then goes onto your steering rack and that keeps all the dust and muck and crap out of this joint here. So my play is in this joint here, not this joint. But if I'm changing that, I might as well change that. So stay tuned, keep watching, and I'll show you how I went about doing this. Okay, first stage is pop this centre cap off, get it jacked up, put an axle stand underneath it for security, and um, then we'll get started. Okay, so now we've got the wheel off. I've turned the steering to steering to the right, just to push the inner track rod end out as far as I can. Okay, so got, got my new one here. This is the inner track rod end. So this is the bit that's got excessive play in it and it will be an MOT failure. And this is why my steering's a little bit vague because the steering's, you know, the wheels are fluctuating and I'm always correcting it. So I've got to change this inner one and I've got a new outer one here as well. I've got them off eBay. I've got left and right, inner and outer, track rod ends. I think they're about £29, so they're not exactly expensive. Uh, obviously, we'll have to have another geometry check afterwards. So when I get a ticket for MOT um, in the next week or so, I'll get them to do a geometry check on it for me as well. Uh, what I'll do is I'll count the number of turns of taking the outer track run end off and count the same number of turns on it which should be getting somewhere near and then what I might do is uh, string line the geo front wheels to the back wheels and that should also double check that I'm somewhere near um, to tide me over until I take it for its geometry check so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do Undo this nut here. If I'm just checking you in shot. Undo this nut here. I have left them all soaking in WD-40 overnight um, because they are now being a bit tight and rusty. So just buzz this undone. So that's the outer track rod end to the hub knuckle um, nut and done. Uh, then I've got to loosen this. Normally I wouldn't bother in doing that, I'd take it all off in one go, but I need to reuse the boot. I need to reuse the steering rack boot, so I've got to get that off over this end. I can't make out whether you're in shot or not. Yeah, so I need to get that off this end. It won't go over. That little bit there of the boot won't go over this this bit here because what, what that is in there that's a little nylon bushing in there 
and that wears out and gives you starts giving you play so that's why we're changing that so I'm gonna undo this nut here now again this has been soaking in WD-40 and I'll give it a quick go today so it is going to be loose so I won't turn that any more than that because like I said I need to turn that um, count the number of turns and there you've got these little like scissor clips see um, it's not a jubilee clip it's like a butterfly clip I think some people call it just pop that off there then that just slides back and now I've got to get to the other one that's in uh, right in delved in there so you, I might not be able to get you in shot while I'm doing that but I'll do it anyway and uh, I'll show you in a sec okay the inner clip it's one of these ones where you put it on and then you pinch this together which then pulls on that to make it tight I have got a new one of those, so if I can't reuse that, I'll use the new one. So now that boot should pull back. Um, where did I put my glove? Right. So this boot now should pull back. And that exposes then that inner bit, which is the same as that. Now I've got to find a spanner and then do that nut, this castellated section. So let me just get a spanner for that. Okay, it looks like that's a 38 mil. Um, 38 mil. The biggest spanner I've got is 36, so it's going to have to be a uh, adjustable spanner job. Hopefully, it's not too tight. Uh, it doesn't appear to be a left hand thread it appears to be a normal right hand thread so you do need to check that because sometimes they do do a left hand thread um, things uh, doesn't mean to say they do it sometimes on these vehicles but um, they do on certain makes and models of different vehicles they put a left hand thread on so I'll see if I can keep you in shot while I'm trying to do this. Now, I don't know if you know it, but in the just spanner I've got a right and a wrong way. This bit should always go to the leading edge because what that'll do then is it will is it will push that in tighter. If you do it the other way, that way round, as you turn it it'll push this out so it makes it looser that's why a lot of people end up rounding off nuts so you always have that this bit here to the leading edge I ain't got much space so I don't know if I'm going to manage to do it with an adjustable spanner or whether I've got to try and get hold of a 38 mil spanner Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that is proving difficult. Looks like I need to get a 38 mil spanner from somewhere on a Sunday. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I ain't going to go and buy a spanner just for the sake of that. Okay, with some wiggling and jiggling, I managed to get that uh, adjustable spanner in there. And just enough just to crack it. So just keep winding that out. Okay, as for releasing this, they can be quite tight. I mean, that's, that nut's off and it's solid. 
all you need to do is you get a decent sized hammer and you belt this face here a few times what that do is it sends shocks around there and it should just drop out so you just put a bit of weight on on there give it a couple of taps Wow, that is tight. <laughs> right, another option is put the nut back on. You see, don't damage threads. Not that we're reusing it, we've got a new one. But you might get it off and find it slightly different. So you've always got to protect it and give it a. That's it, it's gone down now. What that nut's done is it's protected that thread. So if you do end up having to reuse that end, then we've got it. Right, so that's out now. And that's it. So that's the same as that. This one's got play in it. Take a measurement of the full length of that bit from end to end. And then I'll also count the number of turns off of that. And then what I can do is count the number of turns on, measure the full total length of it, and know that I've got it roughly the same length. So I shouldn't be a million miles out with the geometry then. So let me get a tape measure and I'll measure that and go from there. Right, I'm not going to measure that thread section there because that thread might be slightly longer. It does appear the same size, but if I go from this shoulder to that shoulder, I'll know then the same points on the other bit. Four hundred and seventy-eight millimeters. I'll ask you that what that is in a minute, and you can tell me. And then what I'm going to do now is also I'm going to count the number of turns off this, making sure that stays the same place. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 turns. that nut off, the lock nut, the spring clamp and the boot. Now it's just a concertina um, boot, it's not even rubberized, it's more of a plastic. Um, what it's actually made out of I couldn't tell you. If you want to know the part number, um, it's 
It's a Mercedes number, which is A25112951001. That's the part number of the boot. Okay, so like I said, uh, I've double checked that measurement on the new one, put it together and it's still reading 478. So we're Bob on there, done that nut up there. Now I'm going to put some thread lock on here. Um, I don't want that coming undone for obvious reasons. Okay, got my thread lock, lock tight, whatever you want to call it. Just literally put a line down it like that. That's showing up on camera. And then what that'll do then is as you turn it, it'll lock it. I mean, that's probably a little bit too much actually. But, right, I'll whip you back down there and we'll get reinstalling. So as you can see, that bit there is your steering rack and that bit just threads into that and then the boot covers this shaft which is your uh, rack because it's a rack and pinion steering so this is your rack basically it's a thick steel shaft with um, teeth gear on it and then your pinion is a pinion wheel it's basically a gear that then connects to your steering column hence rack and pinion okay right I'll get that put back in Right, so I've tightened that up. I've done it as much as I can. A rough guess, I've probably done it to, off the top of my head, anywhere between 1700 newton meters. And that's a guess, it could be more or less than that. But anyway, that's, that's that side of it done. Now I've just got to get the boot back over. So we'll put the outer track rod end back in the um, hub knuckle. If I can get the there we go. Now this is the nut that goes on here. It's what's called a nylock. Can you see that little blue ring? That little blue ring grips tightly on the thread and locks it in position. So there's no need for any um, Loctite or anything on there. We'll put that on there and do that up. Now, more than likely, the the uh, thread section of that will turn when I try and tighten it. Now, you can either do it one or two ways. You can either put a jack or something underneath there, which put, pushes the cone into the cone seat of the knuckle making it grip or in the top here you've got an allen key I think it's a six mil allen key and you can grip it that way to stop it from turning but let's see how we get on in fact if I use my buzz gun I need a 22 mil socket there's me six What's happening now is it's turning. So the 
Kismet jacks underneath the van as well as an axle stand. Um, I'll use an Allen key on that and um, hold it that way with the spanner. Okay, so we've got the, the spanner, 22mm spanner and a 6mm Allen key. That just holds the scent a bit. I'll do it up. I would talk this up, I don't know what the torque setting is, so I'm just going to do it as tight as I can. That's that. So that's all done now, that's tight. Just need to do the clips and double check that's tight. Um, I'm going to say that was 24mm, didn't I? I've lost 24mm spanner, so. I'll do it up with an adjustable. Okay, just nip that up. So that's that's tight. That's tight. Now I can start putting the clips back onto the boot. Do this little um, butterfly spring clip just turn you just turn you there and then compress that put that over the boot now I have got a new new um, New one for the internal um, bit of the boot. I'll uh, just thread that round and then um, I'll get that put on. I'll get it put into place with, without you in shot because I can't work around the camera properly. Okay, so that's tight, that's tight. The length of the rod has been measured to 478. Put that clip back on there. Put a new clip in there so you can just see it. So that's the boot all secured. The inner track rod end to the rack has been tightened to as tight as I can get it. Uh, it's been thread locked. Um, so that's it. Um, pop the wheel back on. Uh, give it a run at the road and make sure it's all okay. All right, well the wheel looks straight when the wheels are straight. Um, so I'll pop the wheel back on. I can't believe how rusty the brake disc look. It's only been sat, what, three weeks. Uh, I'll check the pads as well while I'm here. They look reasonably new. They look sort of, I don't know. 10-15% worn so I've still got 80-85% left so that's good I don't know if it's picking up on camera but you can see where it's been towing out a bit um, whether that's because of that worn or um, bad geo adjustment or whether it's been carrying a lot of weight in the back at any point and it's been knocking these edges of edges out because obviously if it carries weight what happens is the wheels display out as the back end goes up um, 
so it could have been that but obviously I'm going to get the geo checked um, as soon as possible so I don't want that to get any worse because the rest of the tyre is pretty good um, so if I can get longer out of them the better um, regarding the tyres um, I'm in two minds whether to go for an off-road BF Goodridge style um, I'm not going to change the wheels um, I just don't see the point in doing that um, I refreshed the wheels up a bit as you remember earlier in the build I quite like the white painting the backside to keep clean though but, um, I do like the white keeps it a bit retro old Volkswagen camper sort of style Press these up. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to Google what wheel talk they should be, um, and I'll talk it up. But I can only do that when it's on the ground. So while it's up in the air, I'm going to just double check that that player's gone and it has, it's gone so that's good, my steering should feel my steering should feel good now so I'm happy with that ok, according to many forums and website pages and that it says it should be 240 newton meters 177 pounds feet so I've adjusted that. Don't know if that's coming through. I've adjusted that to 240 newton meters, and um, it sounds about right because I did think it was tight when I was undoing them. So you adjust it when you hear it click. That's enough. That's far enough. opposites so you do as opposite as you can do so you go that one that one that one that one that one That's it, all done. So that about wraps up our quick little maintenance video on our Volkswagen Crafter camper. Uh, like I said, I just did it to get it through its MOT and fix the little bit of steering vagueness. So uh, if you like what you see, please like, please subscribe, and please share. And if you really feel like it, hit that little bell icon and you'll get to see all our future videos. And on that note, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.